Hello again and welcome to my latest ramble. Well, just when you thought it was going to be another boring, slow-ass winter day, another studio belches out some major news. According to Variety, it seems that Netflix film chief Scott Stuber is saying adios. Hasta la vista, as it were. Apparently, he is going to start his own media company. And to that I say kudos, the more the merrier, because we've seen too many of them vanish over the years. Now, this really shouldn't come as a major shock to anyone because talk of his leaving, well, it's been blabbered about for some time now. But the timing of it is what I myself find, well, rather interesting. I mean, what with all the hullabaloo about Zack Snyder being part of the Netflix family now and all the hype and press about his Rebel Moon franchise, and hell, Netflix won six awards at the 2023 Oscars this past year, and that ain't too bad for a company that got its start in the DVD rental business some years back. As expected, well, that announcement has had many Snyder bros on social media licking their kryptonite-encrusted chops, hoping and praying and suggesting that maybe, just maybe, could it be, might it be, please, oh, please, just let it be, An avenue for the GOAT himself, Zack Snyder, to assume control of Netflix films and finally be able to finish what he started. Well, to that I say, stop smoking the guns, my friends. Put down the old bong. Come up for air, cuz, because that ain't gonna happen. I mean, why in the hell would Zack even want to take on that much responsibility after he went through over at WB? And I don't think he would want to be tied down that much anyways. I mean, look at the drama that Gunn is dealing with over at WC right now. Yes, it would be cool if it did happen. Very, very cool. And nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to see Zach's work finished more than old socks here. But dude, come on. I just don't see it happening. Now, the really interesting thing to me in all this is how... Four major studios are having major shakeups these days. Outside of the current Netflix shocker, we all know that WB is flat ass broke and has been looking for a new home, or at the very least, a merger deal for quite some time now. And it was recently reported that Paramount is in dire straits and looking for a bailout, and just today announced the possibility of 25% of its staff being laid off. 25%. I mean, that's just insane to me for the company that gave us the Star Trek series, the the Godfather series, the Indiana Jones series, Braveheart, Forrest Gump, Titanic, Mission Impossible, Transformers, and the list just goes on and on. And we can't have this conversation without bringing up the mouse house itself, good old Disney slash Marvel. Their overzealous, woke agenda got up and shot them both in the proverbial mouse feet with a double-barreled shotgun. They went and messed with a good thing. They stirred the pot entirely way too much. And now they have to stop, take a step back, and reset in hopes of getting back some of that golden goodness that they once had. And they've taken drastic steps to do that very thing with the move to bring back Bob Iger as CEO. The entire film industry, as we know, has changed so much since the advent of COVID, present-day politics, and a crippling economy. Take, for instance, the fact that in 2019 alone, 792 movie titles were released just in the U.S. and Canada. In 2022, 449 last year was even worse, but we also had two major strikes that brought things to a major halt, so we have to take that into consideration. Take that and the fact that people have just gotten complacent. They've got used to watching movies while sitting on their asses in their big-ass leather movie watching recliners with USB ports and cup holders built in and their giant 72-inch flat-screen TVs on the wall and their loud-as-hell all-get-out surround system while eating their own damn popcorn and nachos. Thank you very much. Now, don't get me wrong. The ability to do that is freaking great. I do it myself. But it is killing the movie industry as we've come to know it. People are just simply waiting for movies to hit the streaming platforms. Now, there are exceptions to be sure, especially in the summertime. 
I mean, how else can you explain a billion damn Barbie bucks? If that movie had been released now, today, I'm not so sure it would have done so well because, well, the time of the year. Not to mention this crappy weather coast to coast and the fact that everything is a damn sight more expensive than it was just six months ago. Heck, have you been to the grocery store lately? Man, a package of bacon is around six bucks American and it isn't even a pound anymore. It's only 12 ounces. To me, that's sacrilege. Anywho, I've trailed off yet again, so as I was leading to, it just seems like the major studios are in a state of disarray in search of ways to survive. Now, I don't put Netflix so much in that category simply because they're, at the end of the day, a streaming platform first. It's their meat and potatoes. They are a streaming platform that ventured into film production because they saw a niche, they took a chance, and it's working. It's working pretty damn well. The other guys are simply trying to get a piece of that action while trying to maintain things as they used to be, and they're having a hard time trying to figure out how to do it. They're trying to do what Netflix did, only in reverse, if that makes any sense. Now, one thing is for sure, it's going to be rather interesting over the course of the next year to see how things turn out. You know, who merges with who, what and who gets cut, what and who gets to stay. I myself still think DC is on shaky ground with that 10-year plan and all of the delusions of grandeur that many seem to have over at WB. Now, Disney? Well, I think they could fix things simply by simplifying and going back to what was working, and then leaving the politics and woke-ass current events, well, to CNN and Fox News. I mean, we go to the movies to forget about that crap anyways. Paramount? Hell, who knows what the hell went wrong over there. To me, it seems that they just want to survive on their name and history alone, and that just doesn't cut it anymore. So, as I find myself saying a lot these days, we'll just have to wait and see what happens as only time will tell the tale. Well, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. If you would, please share them. Do you think Stuber leaving Netflix will have a major effect on how Netflix itself does business? I mean, they're doing pretty good now. Will it even matter? What about that roller coaster ride going on over at WB and Paramount? Will they merge? Do you think they even should? And do you think Disney Marvel should just get back to doing what worked for them before, or should they try something different yet again? Feel free to leave your comments down below. Why don't you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of the golden goodness coming up in the future. And as always, thank you for stopping by. God bless. Socks out.